almost all the lizards that are out here are connected directly with other lizards eating lizards. There's a lot of lizard eating lizards. <laughs> and one of the things I've been working on over the last 40 years is making a food web. And the monitor lizards are right at the top. Being top predators, monitor lizards hunt down anything smaller than they are, even their own kin. And in a place too hot and dry for most mammals, these lizards rule. They rival many mammals as cunning hunters. When prowling for food, they don't just follow their victim's scent, they do something else. Monitors think ahead. These calculating hunters learn and memorize all the major landmarks around. They read the landscape like a map, taking shortcuts to hideouts and ambushing prey to avoid energy draining chases. When this monitor comes across a hot scent, he follows the trail relentlessly, using special senses that guide him with lethal accuracy. His target today is an eastern brown snake, one of the world's deadliest. It leaves an unmistakable odor trail, but it's one of many. Other animals have passed this way too. But the monitor can follow the snake's trail and ignore all the others by using his tongue. Like snakes, monitors have forked tongues. By flicking them in the air or touching the ground, they pick up scents. Every time they pull in their tongues, they read these scents with an organ in the roof of their mouths. It's like tasting and smelling at the same time. Even more astonishing, the monitor can tell how long ago his prey has passed and in which way it's heading. He never follows a trail backwards. As long as there's a trace of a scent, he follows it leaving the Lizard King's quarry few options. Hiding underground could be the snake's escape. But the monitor is as skilled at tracking below ground as above. The snake has one last defense. Its venom can kill a human with a single bite. But not the monitor. He seems to be immune. If he can't tear his prey apart, he'll swallow it whole and head first. Being partly solar powered, reptiles only need 10% of the food we mammals need. And if food is scarce, a good meal can last the king for weeks.
Back at camp, Eric and Steven sort through their catch of the day. We even got some monitor lizards. Oh, wow, what? Got a rhinos there. The Red Sands camp is about 250 miles from civilization. And they've been out here for more than two months of searing desert winds and the ever-present bush flies. Eric has been coming here for almost half a century, making his study of the Red Sands lizards unique. It's only long-term data like his that enables us to recognize changes in an ecosystem and understand the local effects of climate change. On this expedition, Eric hopes to find good lizard numbers, especially monitors. As top predators, their presence or absence will indicate whether the desert community here is still healthy. Pretty good, 27 and a half. And soon, Eric will get visitors. He'll be helping them launch a cutting edge project one that could give him new insights into the monitor's notoriously secretive lives. This year, we're doing a different project from anything I've ever done before. I'm collaborating with two ethologists, and we're going to try to see if we can put little cameras on monitor lizards out here. Monitor lizards don't let you watch them, but if you can put a video camera on one, you might be able to see things that you could never see and learn things that Otherwise, we'd never know. Eric's collaborators, Christian Rutz and Lucas Bluff, decide to try the new invention before reaching his camp in Red Sands. Codenamed Lizard Cam, this pilot study is designed to explore the world from the monitor's point of view. And local monitor expert Rex Neindorf has lined up the first grumpy subject. Hey, Rex, what do you got for us? Oh, we've got a big one. <laughs> All right, I'll get out of your way. He's a, he's a big boy. He's yeah. pretty cranky, too, so uh, just keep away from that head. Okay. This large specimen is used to having people around, making him an ideal test candidate. He's big enough to carry lizard cam and should quickly recover from all the high-tech fuss. The next time he sheds his skin, the Velcro fixings will come off. Now we're on air. The camera sends live pictures back to a mobile receiver and has a radio tag so it can be found later. No worries. I think he's ready. Are you guys to go. happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For it. Okay. okay. I'll um, grab him right there. Okay. And uh, if you guys want to just stand back a fraction yep. and uh, we'll You've got see him? how we go. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, okay. yep, yep. And they're all set. It's Lizard Cam's well. world premiere. Okay, big fella. Off you go. I wasn't happy with that. Yeah. I'm actually very happy that he doesn't try to, to remove the unit. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. That's really good. I'm uh, very happy with that because the way the unit's sitting, there's really not much weight there at all, and it's almost just as like there's an insect land on him and he's just going to completely yeah. ignore it. So it looks really good. Yeah. With lizard cam up and running, they can see things from a monitor's perspective. We're on air. Good pictures. Oh, you've got footage coming in. Yeah, it's coming in. For the first time, they see what it sees. To get the best results, Christian and Lucas must now let their subject move out of sight, yet stay close enough to receive the video signal. They can bridge a distance of about a third of a mile, room enough for the Lizard King to roam, and give Lizard Cam its first hard knocks. What is always important for us is to get the attachment technique right. So we want to mount our video cameras in a way that it does not impair the animal's movement and natural behavior. These cameras should have no effect on the animal whatsoever. And this means the camera should drop off rather than trap its host. The packaging is, is the hardest thing because we need a package that is both very rugged, it has to survive in quite a harsh environment, um, but at the same time it should be light, and ideally it can be reused time and time again. 